Okay, everyone, welcome back to another episode of the Say It Out Loud podcast. I'm so grateful to be here. I'm your host, Vasavi Kumar. Um, As you've probably noticed, the past few episodes have been really highlighting the members of my Say It Out Loud group program. I've, I've been wanting, I've had this vision for so long where I wanted to bring on people that I work with and show all of you listening how the the power of and the transformative nature of saying it out loud. So I am very excited to be bringing on Megan Thompson, who's inside the Say It Out Loud group program. Um, Before I go ahead and have Megan introduce a little bit about who she is, where she's from, what she does, who she bees, um, what I wanna say is um, the reason why I've been doing this is because I'm running my program right now, August 5th. It'll be starting the next round of the Say It Out Loud group program. And I'm on a mission to get as many people as possible inside this program who know that it is time for them to become more of themselves, more confident in their skin, using their voice, saying it out loud, um, helping you communicate more authentically, first and foremost, with yourself and with the other people in your life. Because that is a byproduct of when you are honest with yourself, you become honest with other people and uh, life just becomes a lot simpler. So um, we are running early bird pricing right now. It is 500 for the entire 12 weeks, or you can split it up into three payments of 200. After early bird is over, the price does go up to 750. There will still be a three-part payment plan, but I'd love for you to get your booty in during early bird pricing. So I'll go ahead and put the the link in my show notes for you to enroll, learn more, register, all that good stuff. Uh, I'm going to hand it over to you, Megan. How are you today? I'm doing great. It's so good to have you. See your beautiful face. I love seeing your face. You having a good day today so far? I am. I'm an early bird, so I've been up for a little bit. I've had some of my coffee already. Oh, that's great. What time do you usually get up in the morning? Between like six and six thirty. You know what? I I feel like I need to jump back on that bandwagon um, because there's something about getting up. Well, I don't know. I don't even know what time the sun rises, but there's something about getting. <laughs> I've been getting up at like seven seven thirty. But you know what? To each his own. We're all about listening to our body clock. And some days you wake up at six six thirty. Some days you may need to sleep till eight. You know, I and mean, that's just what it is. Why don't you let our uh, our audience know a little bit about you, who you are, um, and just yeah, L- let us let us get to know you. Tell us a little bit about yourself. So I'm a I'm a spiritual life coach and Ayurvedic health coach. I live in Los Angeles, and I do a lot of work with clients through that. I also love teaching yoga, so I've been teaching a lot of yoga classes around the area, and really have been wanting to step more into my confidence. So that's how I found you. Actually, I found you through. Nita through DCI. Mm-hmm. She had you on her podcast and I just yeah loved your energy. So had to had to come over here. So yeah, a lot of my work is through through working with you know clients and and helping them helping guide them through their healing and into into their purpose. But I've kind of put a hold on that to work on me a little bit more. So I really appreciate you saying that because so many people who start their businesses and are in their businesses, listen, I've been in business for 11 years, that inner work, it doesn't ever end. There's, I always say this, new level, new devil, right? So I openly share in the group money mindset stuff that I've been working through and how I've been processing that. And I've been doing this for 11 years. You know, I've been in business for 11 years, been an entrepreneur for 11 years. And I just love that you said that because so many times people go into business and they're like, oh, I need the website, I need the landing pages, I need the email, I need the social media content. And while all of that is necessary, yes, that internal piece that you're speaking about is really what I find most people do not look at because it's harder. It is harder to do that work than it is to slap up the sales page or the website. So what did you, um, you know, you heard me on the podcast, then you decided to join the program, which I'm so happy that you did. But so our audience can maybe see themselves in you. What was it internally that you think you needed to work on? That you could, how how could you see that you were getting in your own way? That inner voice, the Mm -hmm. inner critic was a little louder than my, I guess that higher authentic self that really is loving and, and encourages you. And so you know, when that happens, I know there's definitely something wrong. Gotta, gotta work on that because the inner critic is always going to be there. But 
definitely shouldn't be louder. Absolutely. And here's the thing, when you're on a when you're on this planet and you have a mission to help other people, I mean, it is truly that inner voice that you're speaking about that gets in the way. It's not, oh, am I good enough? Am I a good enough yoga teacher? Am I am I a good enough life coach? No, like even asking that, right? That's how you know, oh shit, I got to really work on what I'm saying to myself. You know what I mean? Because a lot of people let that uh, stop themselves, you know? So I, what was it in your business? And we're going to get into the fun part. The, I mean, I mean, obviously this whole thing is fun, but we're going to get into the rapid fire in a second. But I just would love to hear um, when you decided to join and invest um, in the Say It Out Loud program, what was the dialogue in your head that finally you were like, you know what? It's time. Yeah. So I've, I, I invested in some uh, a marketing coach mm-hmm. and did a lot of work through there. And I think I was just getting like exactly what you were saying before, you know, you, you start your business, you're doing all the business stuff. You're, you're doing your website, you're, you're figuring out marketing, you're working on Instagram algorithm. And I think it's so easy to like get caught up in that and forget to have fun. And so that's kind of where I was. I was like, how do I, how do I work out? How do I figure out the marketing? How do I do this? And then I was like talking to one of my, uh, spiritual biz friends. And she was like, you know, don't think that's the problem. And very kindly encouraged me to work on that area. And so I definitely agreed with her. (laughs) And yeah, it was just divine timing that I, I mean, I love Nita's uh, podcast and came across you and just, I just loved your energy. And so And thank you so much for saying about the energy piece. And I want everyone hearing this because this is something I had to learn, Megan. I always thought it was, how much more do I have to give? How much more do I have to do? And even with this program, and we're going to get into um, the nuts and bolts of the program. If you need information, just go to the show notes uh, or go to vasavikumar.com forward slash say it out loud. Um, I remember in creating this program, I was like, oh, I got to give all this stuff. And I was like, no, Vasavi, keep it simple. What do people actually need? They need a place to say it out loud and they need to be guided by you every week and they need a safe space. You don't need, I mean, and, and, and programs that have modules and worksheets, I, n- nothing wrong with that. There's a time and place. <laughs> but I knew I wanted to simplify this process. And I just want to commend you for how far you've come because even in our almost eight weeks of being together, um, you were not very vocal in the beginning. You didn't really speak up. And now you Voxer, you know, you Voxer, you know, you you uh, audio note us in the community chat almost every day. Almost every day we hear from you. And I know that that's something that you committed to, that you wanted to be heard more and you didn't want to just keep stuff inside. So that just goes the, 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 the power of community and saying it out loud. Okay. Are you ready to get inside our rapid fire questions? Are you laughing? Because I just completely switched gears like that. All right. And if anyone's watching this video, they can, they can, if you're just listening to this, if you want to watch the, the insanity that is me, then feel free to go to the show notes to like actually watch, you can watch this on my, on my uh, actual blog on my website. Um, and you can just watch this. It's great. I love, I love interact, interacting with my clients. Oh, I have dog hair. There we go. All right, let's get started. Megan, um, what's something that you've never been able to do well? Oh man, never been able to do well. Math. (laughs) That's so funny. Courtney said that too. One of our other group members, she said that too. So funny. Yeah, math is not my strong suit. I'm definitely, it's something I'm working on. That's definitely a block. That's been a block and I've talked about in the group and um, yeah. That's, you know, I, I was, th- that's wonderful. And I, that you can admit that. And also from there, there's an opportunity to be like, hmm, my belief or my, my you know, me, me thinking that I'm not good in math. How is that affecting my money? How is that affecting my business? Right. It's just, I ask these questions and I ask these questions of myself because all the things that I think I don't do well, it does stop me in some areas. Um, not always, right? Like one thing I, I say I don't do well is, um, interior design but that's not even true right like if i if i you know read a few interior design books or like went on pinterest i could figure it out right i just think it's interesting the things that we tell ourselves that we're not good at or we don't do well so that's so interesting that you said math as well okay uh what's something you think everyone should try at least once Uh, i don't know 
if this answer is going to be appropriate, but mushrooms. <laughs> Listen, the last time, okay, so let me tell you my mushroom story. <laughs> Sophomore year of college, we got, we ordered pizza, we put mushrooms, like, act, like psychedelic mushrooms, like ha hallucinating mushrooms on my pizza. We got mushroom pizza and we then put mushrooms on the pizza because, you know, this was, god damn it, it was uh, 2000, oh my god, 2001. And uh, I remember tripping balls and watching Shrek. And I swear, Princess Fiona had Tourette's. I just remember her being like this and I remember fucking tripping balls and watching her. So that is the only time that I've done mushrooms. Okay. I'm, I'm much more of a, I like an edible, you know, every night. <laughs> you know? So, okay. Mushrooms are great. Do you take them in capsules or like whole form? I, I do both. Yeah, you know, I have a few friends that microdose mushrooms. They've asked me if I'm interested. I just haven't. I haven't felt called to it. I very much listen to like, ooh, I'm curious. I, I don't. It's not for me. That's important. Yeah. That's super important. Yeah. Okay. Everyone should try mushrooms at least once. Okay. Uh, if you had to work on only one project for the next year, what would it be? This is a great question. Um, I would say women's circle mm, you've been saying that you have you've said that a few times in our on our group calls and in the chat that you've been wanting to do that uh, why is that important to you um i love working one-on-one -on -one with clients mm -hmm. uh, but i definitely feel like there's so much power in community um and so i want to transition well not completely but mm -hmm. I want to do a lot more group uh coaching sessions or containers because I yeah I just think there's just so much power in community it's like I know I mean exactly like what you've said in our group like this isn't just you everyone brings so much to it and everyone in a in a sense like creates in that way and yeah I just I think that's just so beautiful and I think it's so needed you have such a beautiful uh, energy and spirit about you. I feel like you can hold. I I don't feel I don't feel this. I know this about you, but I do feel it. I feel like you have the capacity to hold a lot, like to hold that space for people. And I feel like anyone who would enter into your space would be greatly transformed just because how many of us have had people in our life deeply listen to us you know, like really listen to us. So I, from your mouth to God's ears, because you've said it out loud. And the more we say it out loud, the more it becomes like our cells start to get used to this. You know, it's like, oh, I want to run a woman's group circle. I want to run a woman's group circle. Like the more you say it, it becomes less foreign to your body, right? Because you, have you ever like try or like said something and your body's just like, oh, that felt weird even saying it. That's why, that's why I love asking this question because the thing that you want to work on for the next year, I want practice for every, I want everyone to say that out loud because guess what? You said it out loud. So it shall be. Say that shit over and over again. I shared this on last week's podcast. Oh, no, maybe I didn't. My voiceover teacher, I shared this with you guys. She asked me, are you ready to go pro? No one had ever asked me if I wanted to go pro. What do I look like, a linebacker? You know, I'm ready to go pro, coach. Put me in the NFL. No one ever asked me that. And I was like, yeah, I'm ready to go pro. Like saying that, my cells, my body did a happy dance. It was like, we're going to go pro. We're going to do it. Like I could feel my excitement. So like, I love that you shared that out loud. And I have no doubt that within the next year, you will run a woman's, you will run multiple women's group circles. Thank you. You're welcome. Okay. Next question. When you have 30 minutes of free time, how do you pass the time? I'm, I'm such a, I'm such the person that loves <laughs> to just kind of sit. <laughs> I need, uh, I need to like, I'm like a, a person that just needs to be recharged. Mm -hmm. I just need space. I like quiet. Sometimes I'll take my dog on a walk around the neighborhood. Sometimes I'll grab a snack, but I just usually like to just sit and recharge. <laughs> I No, I, I and I, I forgot what your human design is. What is it? Manifester. So you need that time, right? To recharge and stuff like, yeah, I'm a generator. So it's like, I literally don't do anything until I feel like doing something. <laughs> and if I do do something, I've mentally prepared for it already. Like this weekend I have to spend, I don't have to, I get to spend this weekend writing a bunch of emails to my email list, scheduling them and having my team schedule and automate them. And it's not, it, it hasn't always been the most fun thing for me to do. Uh, 
but I'm starting to enjoy it. And I find my process and I find, I, I've blocked out my calendar. I'm going to go to a hotel lobby and do it. I make it a whole freaking experience, right? So I just, I'm saying this because I think we all have our ways of recharging and getting ourselves ready for the next thing. So I love that you take that time, which is why I think you're so good at holding space because you hold space for yourself. That's beautiful. I didn't know that about you. Now I do. Yeah. Okay, now we're getting into the say it out loud portion of this podcast where I ask all questions related to saying things out loud. All right, Megan, you ready? I'm ready. Okay, there's no rush here. This is not a rapid fire. When did you learn that it was safer to lie than it was to say things out loud? This question is so powerful. Um, I would say when I was younger mm -hmm. and my mom was going through a divorce and I thought that my sister was potentially going to be, you know, taken away. I essentially put on, put this hat on myself that I needed to protect my mom. I needed to protect my sister and my needs can just go in the back seat. Mm -hmm. And I think as I got older, I just kept that hat on and started to trust myself less, started to listen to myself less, or just tell myself when things came up that it can wait mm -hmm. or I can get over it. So pretty early on. So since the program, I'm curious to know when, I mean, I'm, this is just, a, I mean, there's no shame in this question. We're all, we're all very honest on this podcast, but since this podcast, I mean, since this podcast, since this, since you've been in the Say It Out Loud group program, do you find yourself lying less? And here's what I mean is being, I don't mean lying, like calling you a liar, like being dishonest with others about how you feel, which is essentially still lying. You're still being dishonest with yourself and with others. And I think we, there's like a negative connotation to the word lying, but I look at lying, that is a coping mechanism. We lie because it's safer to lie than it is to say things out loud because we do not want to be with the backlash and the emotional dysregulation of other people, people who can't handle our truth. But do you find yourself being more honest, not only with yourself, but with other people since the program? Have, yeah. You, you want to share your most recent story about what happened about what, you know the consequence you know there are consequences to being honest right you want to share that story because I think it's very powerful you know which story I'm talking about yeah yeah um, yeah so I I was working with someone where they were not always honest and they mm -hmm. were not always kind with their words mm -hmm. and. I, instead of allowing it to happen yet again, mm -hmm. decided to speak up and let them know that I didn't appreciate how they spoke to me. I didn't appreciate the fact that they lied to me and took me in circles and that I hoped that we could figure out a better way to communicate moving forward. And they decided that I was aggressive <laughs> and um, confrontational and decided to terminate me. Mm -hmm. And yeah, it was one of those situations where I was mostly fine. <laughs> like, of course, there's those freak moments. out. Yeah, the freak out moments. But ultimately, it was more important to speak up than to continue to allow this person to be rude to me, take me in circles and, and all of that. So um, what a great, yeah, well, that, that's, I, I, that's what I want everyone listening to hear is like, listen, it's not always going to be pretty, right? We always say like, you know, the truth shall set you free. It might also get you fired, right? It might also get you fired, but you know what? At least you fucking have your self-respect and dignity, right? Like you can find another job. You can get clients, but you like, you like, you can do that, but your dignity and your self-respect do you know what I mean? Like those are moment to moment decisions to, am I going to betray myself or am I going to be honest and stand up for myself? So I'm really proud of you. That, that was huge. I remember when you shared that in the group and that was just like, what, two, three weeks ago. Yeah. So that's like our fourth week, 
third or yeah, fourth week in the program or something like that, not even a month, and that happened. And I was just really proud of you. I was like, oh shit, I, had a, I freaked out for you too. But I was like, she's going to be fine. Because here's the thing when you are honest and you're true to yourself, you become unfuckwithable, right? You become unshakable. You do that enough times, and that gives you strength. You become strong on the inside. You can handle anything, right? You can. And so this is just another thing in your life, another blip, and you will get through it, and you're getting through it, and it's going to be okay. It's going to be okay because you chose yourself first. You can't fuck it up if you choose yourself, period. Yeah. Really proud. proud of you. All right, second question. Ooh, I, okay, so uh, actually, I'm going to do what I did with Courtney on last week's episode, and I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to just leave this up for your inter- interpretation. What is something that you've been wanting to say out loud but haven't? God, every part of me wants to like control this answer and I'm not going to. <laughs> I'm like, this is, I'm bad at these like on the spot questions. I know you're doing great. <laughs> what is that? Can you repeat it to me? Yeah, absolutely. Okay. You're in, yeah. Maybe you're a little bit in your head. It's okay. It's a great question. What is something that you've been wanting to say out loud, but haven't? I'm not really sure about this. I feel like for the most part, I, I mean, I'm, I'm pretty, I've been saying everything. I've been showing up. I've been saying it all, but. Let me, can I give you some context? Let me, let me share. I said this uh, on another episode too, with when I was talking to Alex, one of the other group members, what is something about yourself that you haven't acknowledged about yourself, celebrated about yourself out loud? Like what is something, what are you realizing about yourself and your worth and your essence and your value that you haven't said out loud yet? And you want to say it out loud here. I think something that I'm stepping more into is, and I we've kind of talked about this in the group, is that uh, feminine masculine uh, duality that mm-hmm. we all have in, in us. And I've been, you know, uh, in the mode of masculine. I've mm-hmm. been like, everything I'm doing is from the masculine energy. And so I've been diving more into the feminine, which isn't, it doesn't feel as natural. Mm -hmm. Um, But it also, I think it's just so important for us to dive into both of those sides of us. And um, sometimes that's hard for me because the masculine doesn't want to, you know, that masculine energy, that masculine side of me, you know, the, the side that wants to control and, and to have things set and to, you know, know exactly what's going on, um, doesn't want to go with the flow and be gentle always, you know, again, the inner critic comes up of like, okay, let's, you know, let's get this done. Let's do this. Don't, don't worry. You know, like you might be sad about it, but get over it. Let's keep going. And then that feminine is like, okay, actually, no, let's rest. Let's, and I've been really, um, yeah, it's just sometimes it's it's like a vulnerability thing. Well, you know, I um, just given what you said about your mom getting divorced and feeling the need to protect, that is a very masculine quality to protect. You've been in your masculine since you were a kid because you felt like you had to. You felt like you... I relate to this so much. I mean, one of the things that my mom loves about me and I used to pride myself is I am so structured. I am so disciplined. And I am. I'm structured and I'm disciplined. Dude, I've become so lazy. It's been fantastic. And I had this epiphany after eating an edible uh, the other day. I was like, wait a minute. I'm actually so go with the flow. I'm actually like, if I if I have a date with a friend and she's like, listen, I'm not feeling good. Can we cancel? I'm like, okay. I don't get upset about these things. I do not get butt hurt if someone cancels on me. If someone, like if, if, in, in, in friendships, right? Like if in friendships, like I don't get... Like, oh, or like even with like in my business, the way I now treat my social media, it's very much in the moment. Megan, I used to have three months worth of content scheduled, ready to go. I used to do that and I, and I loved it. It was great for me. But now what I realize is I'm much more of a go with the flow. And so that for everyone listening, if you relate to this, if you've noticed that you're, you've been operating much more from your masculine, what I want to say from my own personal experience is that that is a coping mechanism. We had to become like that because the people in our life did not provide us that. 
And so it's really fun. And I'm glad that you shared this out loud. It's really fun to see like, hmm, what's a different way of me approaching this? Let me see if I can just chill, be a little lazy, wait to respond instead of making shit happen. You know, it just feels so tight. Um, and I got to tell you, things are, and I, I, you know, I, this is one of the perks of being inside the community chat and inside the Say It Out Loud group program. I share my shit with all of you guys. I let you know the internal process. I let you know how I've been running my business from masculine versus feminine. And I share when I make money in an easy way because I want to show you it is possible. What is that internal dialogue that you need to have to chill the fuck out and trust? It's not easy. I don't even want to act like this shit is easy. It is a lot of work. And what I mean by that is it's an intentional moment to moment decision to chill out, to be calm. You know, so are you finding that with yourself as well? Like this, and are you finding that saying it out loud and having the community and learning how to talk to yourself is actually helping you lean more into your feminine? Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. Cause it is, I mean, it has, I've, I've been told for years, just chill. Oh, you know, what's so funny though, but Megan, this is what's so funny. You, you come off as really chill. Like I said, here you are with your flannel. You got your hoop earrings. You're just like, hey, here I am with my long hair and my plant wall. Like, I'm like, you are so chill. And it's so, so I wonder if that, that's the vibe you give. But the people who really know you probably know you to be someone who is I what? Think more about like in business. Okay. You know? Like in business, I've been just go, 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 go. But it's also in business, you also need to bring in that feminine energy. You also need to rest. You also need to be lazy a little bit. You also need to, you know, allow that time to just take a step back from what you're doing. So it's not <laughs> so like, go, 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 go all the time. Um, and also letting your create, you know, my, my best ideas come to me in the shower. My best ideas come to me when I'm planted on my ass with the heating pad on my back and watching the, I'm not kidding. I was watching the Kardashians the other day on Hulu. Um, cause I love the Kardashians. I don't care what anybody says. Like I, I listen, she's a great example of how to make money being yourself. Perfect. You know, example. Things. You know I've been watching selling sunsets. I'm like, I want to, I'm going to have one of those houses. Yes. I good. Watch it. Yes, absolutely. And so, I have my best moments, my creative juices, when I'm just relaxed. You need to relax. You cannot force great ideas. You cannot. That is not. It's like, I think of your creativity as your inner child, right? You're going to force your child to do something? No. Like, that should, well, you may be able to, but it's going to be exhausting and it's going to be miserable. That's exactly what it's going to be. It's going to be exhausting and it's going to be miserable. So, um, I thank you for, for sharing that. Okay. Um... Lately, what is the catchphrase that you've been saying out loud? Well, unfuck with the bull has been one of them. Ever since Courtney brought that up, I just have her voice in my head, um, which has been so great. Love her. Yeah. Uh, that's definitely one. And that money comes easily mm. to me. How, how does that feel when you say how does that feel in your body when you say that out loud does your body believe what your mouth is saying starting to yeah that's 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 what really matters it is a moment to moment daily decision and i'll tell you for everyone listening who's ever struggled with this or you know trusting that money will come i look at i now look at money as a person that's what I do. I'm a, I'm a visual person. I love relationships, friendships. So I look at money as a person. And so I pay attention to how do I talk to money? Am I like, oh, oh, okay. You just, you know, I just spent you, but I don't know when the next bit is going to come. Okay. And I'm like, fuck, like it, when you imagine money as a person, it actually really, it becomes a lot easier to transform that relationship with money. And I'm learning this in 39, 40 years now. Like that was the last kind of thing you know, we, we, th there are many layers to us. So like, there's a lot of my internal stuff that I've worked on. Money was probably the last thing I needed to work on. I didn't realize how much it had control over me, how much power I gave over to money, but money, I, I look at money as like a boyfriend, right? Or a partner. And I do the same. I did the same. I'm going to say I did because this is not present anymore. I did the same thing with, um, exes of mine. If we were to hang out, I'd be like, Ooh, I don't know the next time we're going to hang out again. Like I'd get nervous. Like it was going to be the last time that I saw you. And I was like, no, there's plenty of it, plenty of it. And I'm not, I refuse to be desperate and thirsty. And I, and I had a lot of compassion for myself because I realized, uh, you know, it's, I grew up where things were not as predictable. 
right? They were not a stable. I didn't know my mother's moods. I didn't know when things were going to be popped off and it was going to be World War III. I didn't know when things were going to be chaotic again. And so I was always living on the edge, waiting, waiting for the next shoe to drop, you know, waiting for that shoe to drop. So of course that energy, when you invest in yourself, right? This is, I'm sure people have this when it comes to investing, they invest and they're like, Ooh, I don't know if I'm going to get an ROI. I don't know if this is going to work. And it's like, No, trust that you're spending this money and it's coming from a place of like, I want to invest in myself. And when I invest in myself, of course, it's going to come back to me, right? That takes time though. And I'm really proud of you for working on that. Does this resonate with you, Megan? Yeah, definitely. Yeah, it's something that I've been working on for a while. I definitely have gotten better at it. Yeah. It it is a process. Okay, so um, what is something that you want to encourage my audience to say more of out loud. Just exactly what you're like, exactly what you want to say. (laughs) Just say it. You want to say, yeah. I don't think there's anything specific. Like it's not my job to tell anybody what to say. Just like it's not your job to tell anybody what to say. Mm -hmm. We're all here to say what we want to say, but we just don't. That was so simply stated. It's like, you you don't, you're encouraging my audience to say exactly what they want to say. And I love that because you're not telling them what to say. You're, you're guiding them to say what you, because you have it in your head. You know what you want to say. You're not saying it. Like, I love that release of like putting the power back in the audience's hands. Yeah. That's beautiful. See, this is why you, I can already see that you would make a great group facilitator because I've been in some groups where the facilitator uh, is like, they're, they're expecting you to say something. It's like, it feels very contrived. The best groups that I've been in, and that's really what I strive to create in the Say It Out Loud group program is like, just say what you want to say, man. Like, I have no agenda here. My agenda is your agenda, right? Like, my, my, that is my agenda. My agenda is what, what you want to talk about, right? Like, it's, I, I want to put that sovereignty back in people's hands so, like, I can imagine you know, you creating your group programs and having it be such a beautiful, safe uh, space for people to truly just say what they want to say out loud and shrivel that shame. Thank you. Yeah. Yeah. And a lot of that is in, in this group. I think exactly what you said earlier, like if you had modules and all this other stuff, it would just completely take away from this group. It would water it down. It would water, it would water. If this, what we do is so potent, it's literally all you need is your voice and not to be fixed and not to be judged. Ask for what you need. Just say the shit that's been keeping you in your darkness. And there's nothing wrong with our shadow. I love our shadow side. Like I love shadow work, maybe a little bit too much, but I love that. Yeah, so so um, thank you for acknowledging that. Yeah, that's, I, I don't ever want to be, I don't ever want to run a group where people like, feel like they need to impress or say the right thing is like, no, whatever you say is necessary. Just say it, you know, just say what, yeah, it's like, there's such freedom in that. Um, okay. Two last questions. Well, there's going to be three. What is the most badass thing that you were, that you're most proud of saying out loud in the recent, recent few weeks? Um, Probably just the fact that I quit my quit that or that I got that I stood up for myself, even though I got terminated. Mm-hmm. Yeah, that's probably that's that's a huge motivator for me. And that was a huge moment where I was really proud of myself. Mm-hmm. I'm proud of you, too, because that, you know, even though the, the getting terminated part, I know probably maybe, you know, brought up fears like we said before, you know, earlier in this episode, it's like your self dignity, your your dignity and your respect is just, it weighs and is worth so much more than a paycheck. And I know it feels scary. Oh, trust me, I get that, man. But it's like you, you, you have your dignity at least. And from there you can build, right? It's really, it's much harder to build when you have low self-esteem. You know, you can use low self-esteem as a fuel, but I'm sorry, I'll go ahead. What were you going to say? I was saying that's exactly it. It's like the I'm I'm came into this group to work on my confidence, my self esteem, and what a disservice I would be doing to allow someone to continue to talk to me in such a way that I've already asked them not to, mm. and we've already had a conversation. So why would I continue to allow the person to do that while committing to you know 
working on my self-esteem and confidence. It's just such a, a disservice. So yeah, that was, that was, a. Um, yeah, I was just really proud of myself in that moment. We we're all proud of you. Um, okay, what do you say out loud to yourself when you look in the mirror? I don't often just look in my mirror in the mirror at myself. Okay, then you need to. <laughs> you no, know, I. I think I'm hot. <laughs> You are hot. Yes, you, I did not think you were going to say that, but I'm like, whoa, did you? I, yes, you are. You're beautiful. You're beautiful. You have this radiant, flowy, like they're just so like, hello, here I am. I'm a goddess. Like you just have those vibes. Like I remember when I first saw you um, and you had joined the group and I asked you to, like I have everyone who joins the group to send me a video about why they joined the group. I do that for marketing purposes, but I also do that because I want to see the transition. I want to see your progression. I want to see what were you like on day one? What were you like on, you know, week six or whatever? So and I remember when I first got your um, video, I was like, oh my God, she's like, she's like of the heavens. <laughs> You're like a fucking mermaid, like, like so just beautiful and radiant and flowy. And it's like, I love that you look in the mirror and think you're hot. That's amazing. I did not expect you to say that. <laughs> okay. So last question. Uh, well, no, it's like second to last question here. So is there anything... I'm looking this up for a second. Okay. Is there anything that you haven't said that you want to say out loud? You know, I'm pretty vocal. I don't know. I don't think there's anything necessarily that I haven't said. I just want to... I'm just so grateful to to be here, to be on this podcast, to be in this group. I'm so grateful to be working on myself and in this group with such amazing women that are there to work on themselves as well. And I think the best part is nobody's there to fix each other, or give each other advice or anything like that. We're just there to truly support. And that's something that I don't, I haven't always had in my life. And so this is, this group is really showing me what that can look like. And that's huge for me. So really just, you know, if there's anything I can say to anybody listening is invest in yourself. It's such an, it's so important. It's so important to invest in yourself, whether that's like, your business, your your personal, your like a therapist, whatever it is, invest in yourself. Well, I um, I would love for you to share. First, thank you for saying that. Um, I would love for you to share um, any projects that you're currently excited about. What do you have going on that you're excited to share? Any offers, programs, um, ways for people to get in touch with you? Because here's the thing. I, every single person that comes into my program, I vouch for them professionally as well. So it's like, I know the work that you're doing. I know who you are as a person more than anything. It's not even what you do. It's who you be. So this is my shameless plug for you, for you, Megan, for anyone who resonates with Megan's story, who wants to be in her energy, please go ahead, hire her, talk to her, do all the things. Um, so how can people learn more about you? How can they work with you? This is your, please let us know. Let us know. So you can find me at unfoldyourdharma.com mm -hmm. or unfoldyourdharma on Instagram. Mm -hmm. um, you, I mean, I do one-on-one -on -one coaching. I am working on a group program. Good. So, Keep an eye out for that in mid July. Okay. So, um, yeah. you I love that little shimmy that you just did. That was cute. And then, yeah, I've been doing kind of like pop ups as well around the around the city, um, selling some smoke blends and herbal tea blends. So I'm, you know, that manifester all over the place. <laughs> you. Yeah. But yeah. Check me out. Follow me. Reach out. I'm always happy. This vibe is I, I I can I can imagine someone that like 
is a little high strung, could definitely benefit working with you, to be honest. Like, I immediately, like, I'm like on a level 10 right now, because when I'm doing these interviews, I'm like, I got to be, I want to be fully on and like give my, you know, but I just, I feel calm just being around you, you know, it's your presence in the group is so grounding, like it's so grounding. So uh, everyone, I'm going to put all the uh, information for Megan in the show notes. I will put the Say It Out Loud group program link in the show notes. Um, I want to say thank you to you, Megan, for taking your time today, being on the podcast and uh, gracing us with your energy because this is be beautiful. I just, and your honesty, and that's what I want everyone hearing, right? It's like, we have this belief that like being professional, like, oh God, we can't share our shit. We can't be vulnerable. But I actually think you're way more qualified to help people when you are, uh, when you allow yourself to share your shit. I want to know that who I'm working with, helping me heal my shit is open and honest about theirs. I don't want someone who I'm like, you don't get me, you know? So I love how transparent you were on the po um, podcast today, Megan, about your own stuff and what you're working on, you know? And and for me listening, if I was thinking about hiring you, I'd be like, yes, I want to, oh my God, I, re I, I relate to that. Oh my God, she gets me, you know? So this is just proof once again, and this is what I love about all the women in the group is that they're becoming more okay and open with owning their shit, owning their flaws out loud. You have nothing to hide. I have nothing to hide, you know, and this is who I am. And and um, you can be yourself, you can help others, and you can make money. And I am evidence of that. And I want every single one of you in the program to, to know that too. And that's why this work, that's why I wanted you on the podcast today. So thank you for showing up today fully as yourself. Thank you. And honestly, it's it's just a mirror you've you've shown all of us in the group that and yeah it's just that's just showing how much this uh this program is worth investing everyone <laughs> so get in there yeah thank you megan okay. okay everyone if you haven't caught up to the other episodes just feel free to go back and binge binge listen or binge watch i want to say thank you so much for um, listening to another episode of the say it out loud podcast and i will catch you soon have a beautiful day.